Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and I'm so excited to see all of you here from all over the US and all over the world. We have friends coming in from Australia and all over Europe, and it is just great to see you guys. I hope that uh, you're all having a great week. I see lots of weather reports coming in, and I've got to tell you, Wisconsin is weird. It is like 40 degrees out today. I have a t-shirt on, and I am freezing, and it's gray, and it's cloudy, and it makes you want to go take a nap. You know what I mean? But instead, we're in the perfect place because we're in the craft room today, and nothing is more fun than crafting on one of these cozy kinds of days, right? So today I'm going to do another masking magic video. Now I know I've done a couple different masking videos over the last week, um, but you know, I, I figure if people are going to invest in something, it's just fun to come up with more and more different ways to use it. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is Masking Magic. It's a product that, um, a collaboration product with Gina K Designs and ThermaWeb. ThermaWeb is the leader in sticky products, tapes and foam squares and all those kinds of things. And when they came up with Masking Magic, I just absolutely freaked out. It was the best masking paper I've ever used. So that's what we're gonna use today. Now, if you don't have masking magic, you can do this with washi tape, but what one thing that I noticed is because I'm gonna heat emboss over the masking magic, sometimes the washi tape gets a little gluey and sticky, and um, that doesn't really work as well as using the masking magic. So you give it a try and see how it works, but if you have this, this is the ticket today. So I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending and I'm going to use it for my first card. I'm going to use a big background stamp and this is our rose lace background stamp and but you can use any kind of background stamp that you have in your collection. Just pick one that you like and uh, it'll work out just fine. Thank you so much. Yeah, I decided to straighten my hair today. It's still coming out guys. I don't know what's going on. I made an appointment with a dermatologist to see if we can figure out why it's falling out. You know, I do have thyroid disease. I have, um, I don't know what they call it, if it's Hashimoto's or if it's just a hypoactive, hypoactive thyroid, that's where it's slow. So I'm on medicine, but my medicine, they checked it and they said it was, it was a little bit high and they told me to cut one pill a week and I've done that, but that could be making it fall out. I just, it's falling out right now. I just don't even know. But um, there's enough there that I could straighten it. So I'm going with it and I'll probably be back to my headband next time you see me. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna start with this paper cutter here. I have the uh, We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter. And what I'm gonna do is I have a piece of masking magic. This is just a little pencil line on it. I don't know why that's there. But what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to be cutting this down in quarter inch strips. Now quarter inch strip is really hard to cut down to find it on this side of your paper cutter. So the trick to cutting um, quarter inch strips is to start your piece of paper at an even number. So let's say, you know, it was like up here somewhere like four and five eighths or three eighths or whatever. Just cut it down to a nice even number like five inches. That's where you want to cut it down, five inches. I'm going to use this side because I want these strips to be long. So this is the full um, width these pieces of masking magic are five by seven. So I'm using the five inch side here and I'm gonna turn it and cut my strips off of that seven inch side. Now I've got mine here at three and three quarters of an inch. I'm just gonna move it down one quarter of an inch and I'm gonna cut a strip. And that is the quick and easy way to cut those strips. So now I'm gonna go from three and a half inches to three and a quarter inches and cut another strip. I'm going to cut one at three inches. I'm going to cut one at two and three quarter inches. I'm going to cut one at two and a half. I don't know how many I'm going to need, but I'm just going to keep cutting until it gets a little uncomfortable to cut here because it's too, uh, too hard to line it up. I'll just do the two inch one here and then I think I'll be done. Um, 
you know, and then whatever's left on your masking magic sheet, this is plenty to stamp some flowers and cut them out and mask them, stamp, you know, a little fuzzy animal stamp, something like that. So save all of these pieces of masking magic. All right, so I've got a little pile of strips here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock, and this is three and three quarters by five inches. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take these strips of masking magic and I am, let me grab something here from behind me. I am going to place them, you know, I guess you saw the, the title of this is a new angle on masking magic. Okay. So I am going to angle this masking magic like this. Now, don't worry if it's not perfect because masking magic is very forgiving. You can pick it up, you can move it, um, it resticks, you can reuse it. That's one of the other things I love about it. Okay, I'm going to do one on an angle going this way. Then, welcome everyone. It's great to see you guys. I know a lot of people are at work, so they have to. Uh, you know, they have to sneak away or they're going on their lunch hour and they join us from lunch. So you can see I'm angling these and I'm not worried if they're perfectly even because I can kind of straighten them up a little bit once I take a look at my finished placement here. But I'm just trying to get the basic pattern down. So I'm using five strips. And I'm trying to make them a little bit even, but again, they don't have to be perfectly even. So if you see something that you want to change up, you always can, but I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Why not? So I'm going to press that masking magic down so it doesn't lift. And then I'm going to use the embossing magic pad and I'm going to rub that pad all over the surface of my cardstock. And what that does is it removes static from the surface of the cardstock. And it also removes any oils or anything like that that I might get from my fingers on that cardstock. Okay, so now let me move this out of the way. I'm going to get my big background stamp. And again, this one is called Rose Lace. This is going to stick pretty well because I don't, I generally don't use my Misty to stamp these kinds of stamps. They're cling cushion on the back. I don't use a big acrylic block. I just stick it right to the surface, like my mat. It won't shift around. And if you have a hard surface, like a laminate counter, you know, you can use something like that. Okay, so I'm going to use some Versamark ink. You can use any kind of embossing ink. You can even use white pigment ink for this. And I'm going to ink this up really well. You can see this rubber stamp is stained and well loved. <laughs> That's because I put it away with red ink on it. I forgot to clean it. Well, I didn't forget. I was just lazy. Okay. I really want to get it inky. Okay. You don't have to do the whole thing. I'm just doing a good portion of it. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip this upside down and I'm going to lay it on top of my stamp like that. Then I'm going to put a piece of cardstock on top and I'm just going to get my Chucky tool, but you can also use your hand for this. This is another great use for your Chucky tool. And for those of you that don't, that don't know what a Chucky tool is, my friend Chuck Meadows invented this. I see lots of places now trying to do them, but Chuck is the original inventor of this. And he did it with a curtain finial, a furniture protector pad, and he gorilla glued them together. And a lot of, a lot of um, companies are now selling them. They're making, they're using like um, air hockey paddles and stuff and, all kinds of stuff like that. And I know Jennifer McGuire had a great idea of using a dry eraser. But if you go over to the Gina K Designs Facebook group, we have a whole album over there of people who have made their own Chucky tools and they're so beautiful. Okay, so that stuck nicely because of the masking magic. So I didn't have to worry about trying to get it off of my stamp. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my white embossing powder here. I have a big tub of it. That, that red ink is coming off. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, there we go. And I'm trying not to really touch too much of the, the surface here. So I'm trying to hold it by the masking magic, which is kind of nice to have those little tabs to hold on to when you're doing a whole piece. If you didn't have those, then I would just cut the piece bigger and then just trim it down once you're done. Okay, so my next step, just to blow away the excess there, my next step is to, and I do have my clothespin in case anybody wants to know. My friend Karen gave me this clothespin, but I'm not going to use it today because I need to support this underneath and I can't really clothespin on the top. But a clothespin is a great way to hold a little piece that you're embossing. So I'll use it a little bit later in another one that I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to emboss this. Make sure I have good detail here. And you want to also emboss over your masking magic because that has the design in it. And the reason you want to emboss over that masking magic is because when you ink blend, you don't want to spread that embossing powder into your ink. So you want it to be completely embossed. Ready? And also, when you're doing something like this, make sure you focus around the edges. You don't wanna leave any of the edges not embossed. It's easy to kind of focus more on the middle, but you also wanna go back around the outside and make sure all the edges are embossed as well. Or you're, you know, you'll rub that embossing powder right off and you won't get the full detail. So I just go right around the perimeter when I'm done just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. And also it's a good idea when you're embossing something this big to kind of turn it into the light to make sure you don't see any areas that look kind of dry and crinkly. That means it's not completely embossed. Just make sure it all looks shiny. Okay. So now I'm going to put this back down onto my paper. And you can use the masking magic to help hold everything down if you want. It's kind of a little benefit of using it. And then I have some post-it notes here. Now you don't have to use post-it notes. You can use a piece of copy paper. You can use another piece of masking magic, but I'm gonna use a post-it note here. I don't recommend using this instead of masking magic though, because this is not sticky. I know they sell the full sheets, but actually the full sheets aren't any cheaper than masking magic and masking magic takes ink really well. Okay, so I'm going to put that right in the middle of the masking magic strip. And then I'm going to start some rainbow blending here. So I'm going to start with red velvet. Red velvet is a great color for ink blending for rainbows. Let's turn this around here. Okay. So I'm going to ink up my red brush. And I'm going to start a little bit off the cardstock here, and I'm going to get a nice solid red blend. I'm putting a little extra pressure here with my thumb. And if you're doing it this way and it's starting to hurt your finger, try holding it this way and putting the pressure with your thumb because your thumb might be a little bit stronger and it might just feel a little bit better, like you can get a little more pressure. I do it both ways, so... Okay, so there I've got my red ink. Now, before I move to my next color, I want to use a piece of paper towel here, and I want to rub any excess ink off of that because I'm going to be doing my next ink color, and I, I just don't want that to contaminate my brush. So I'm going to pull this off here and make sure I don't pull my masking magic up. And I'm going to replace this here. And then I'm going to take another sticky note pad. And, you know, you can reuse these as well. I'm going to put that in the middle of the next strip going down. And then I'm going to move to my next color of the rainbow, which is orange. So I'm going to use Tangerine Twist. So Tangerine Twist is a great color, but you can also use um, Sweet Mango or any orange that you have. Even a peach would work here if you don't have an orange. 
you just want to kind of stick to that Roy G. Biv. I, I never remember how to say that, and that's supposed to be helpful to say that. We should be getting some inks in soon. Yes, we should be getting inks in soon. Um, I know that um, we got a shipment of ink cubes, and they're counting them. There are There are seriously thousands and thousands of them, so they have to count them all to make sure that everything came in. Um, but we should be able to put some ink cubes back in stock soon. Okay, so now I'm gonna, and we have ink pads coming as well. All right. The ink pads aren't here yet though. All right, so now I'm putting that back up there to cover that half. And I'm gonna get another sticky note, post-it note and put it right in the middle of this one. My next color is going to be yellow. So I'm going to use wild dandelion. That's my first choice, but there's also sweet corn and lemon drop. Any of those would work. And if you're doing a fall blend, you could use something like honey mustard or prickly pear. That would be very pretty too. And the masking magic. Masking magic is a Gina K Designs product, and it's manufactured by Thermoweb. And we might have some in stock because I know we got another shipment in, but it does sell out when I do these videos. So I just did one on Monday, so I'm not sure what happened there. But I know a lot of you did get it, so hopefully you're going to enjoy this video. And uh, for those of you that didn't get it, I'm sure we have more on order. Okay, so now I'm gonna move this one. I'm gonna put that up there. So I'm just kind of masking off the areas that I wanna ink blend. Not because I'm worried about, you know, the line, because the line is being protected by masking magic, but I don't want the colors to mix. Now, if you want to, the colors to mix, then don't use the post-it notes. And that's a really pretty look as well. So my next color is jelly bean green. Uh, Masking Magic only comes in the 5x7 size, and it's a pack of 12. So you get a lot of Masking Magic in there. It does last a very long time. And, you know, it's always a good idea to kind of secure your Post-it notes, too, so they don't go flying off. Because, again, they're not as sticky as Masking Magic. They're just nice for this purpose. But... Um, you know, you can already see them coming up. Once they start to get wet, they get a little saturated and they start peeling up. The Masking Magic won't, won't do that. Okay. And then, what other color do we have going? My next color is going to be teal. I'm going to use like a aqua color. So, of course, you know which one I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Turquoise C. But you can use... Tranquil Teal, you can use Sea Glass, you can use Blue Lagoon, you can use Ocean Mist. Oops, one more post-it note. Alrighty, here we go. Here we go. This is kind of a favorite combination for me, this rainbow blend. You see me use this in a lot of videos. Okay, and then again with the paper towel, you can see how white the images get when I just rub it with the paper towel too. And then my final color is going to be wild lilac. Now another choice would be lovely lavender. That would be very pale, but wild wisteria is also a good one. So I just like to give you some alternate colors in case some of you have a lot of our colors, but you don't have all of them. And you're thinking, well, what can I use? Maybe you have wild wisteria instead of wild lilac. All right, last one. This is a super fun, fun way to use um, masking magic. Okay, and then I'm gonna clean that up. I can probably get a little more ink right here. Here we go. I actually used my finger instead of the paper towel on that one. So <laughs> I want to be careful not to contaminate my clean areas. Okay, so I'm going to pull these off now. 
And again, they can be reused. So I'll, I'll reuse these for my next card. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so it looks like a hot mess right now, but it's going to look very pretty. So now what we're going to do is we're going to peel off the Masking Magic strips. Mm. Isn't that fun? <laughs> you like that, Tom? This was Tom's idea, believe it or not, this morning. I said to Tom, what technique should I do today? And he said, well, have you ever done something where you don't really need to do a lot of stamping. It's more about the background and then a big word. And so isn't that pretty? I love that. Kathy, I see your comment. Your comment's showing. I don't know why it's not showing for you, but I see it, Kathy Myers. Just want you to know so that you know that we see what you're saying. Okay. All right. So now we have that first background. It does. It looks like Okay, the comments are really going by quick. Okay, so uh, what I did here was I cut a piece of black. Now, this is cut the same size as the master layouts. So it master layouts one. So if you prefer to use dies, if you don't feel like comfortable about cutting this stuff, um, you definitely can, um, you know, use the master layouts for that. Master layouts one would be the one to use. Okay. I'm going to put this here. And then I'm going to put it on a white card base. There we go. And remember, if you guys are watching on YouTube, well, if you're watching on YouTube, I would love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd subscribe to my channel, that would be so delightful. Um, if you don't like the video and you want to give it a thumbs down, that's okay. You can do that. All interaction is good interaction on YouTube, although it'll make me cry, but just for a little bit. Um, but I would love you to give the video a thumbs up and um, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Then you'll never miss another video. Now, if you're watching on Facebook, later on I'll be posting high quality photos both on our Facebook page and in our Facebook group. And if you're watching on YouTube, I will be posting a high quality photo in my on my channel on my community tab. It's always good to just check sometime after the video so that you can really see what these look like because I know live video isn't always great for everyone. Um, it all depends on what your internet speed is. Um, for some people, it's just as crisp as a regular video. And for other people, it's a little bit blurrier. Okay. And then for those of you who are watching on Twitch, welcome my new Twitch friends. I think I have six, I have 16 people who watch on Twitch <laughs> right now. So that's exciting. <laughs> um, and welcome to you guys. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside and we'll finish up these cards a little bit later. All right, so now for the second one, I have another piece of cardstock the same size. And I only have two strips left, but I think that's going to be enough. Because for this one, I'm going to do a three color blend. Okay, but I'm still going to do the same kind of thing, but I'm going to do a three color blend. So I'm going to start with... You don't get the community thing? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I thought everybody got the community thing. Well, if you have Facebook, come on over to our Facebook group because those high quality pictures are posted in our Facebook group and also on my Facebook page. So you'll be able to see them there. Okay, so I am just doing like a V right here in the middle of the card like that. Okay. And now I was thinking, okay, so what if people don't have a big background stamp? Maybe you have this stamp set. You guys are going to be like, oh, no, not that set again. But yes, this set again. This is the holiday tapestry set. I use this set in so many videos that if you didn't get this set, you need this set because there are about 10 million ideas on my YouTube channel using this one. I'm going to use it again because... Not everybody has big rubber background stamps, but you might have this one since I used it so much. 
Now what I'm going to do here is I am going to, this will be a little easier to lay out, I think. So I'm going to find my misty corner. This is the misty corner. And I'm going to put the misty corner down here in the bottom of my misty. And if you are new to the misty and you don't know what this is for, what this does is this allows you to stamp. Let me just, it's better to see a visual. Okay, if I have a piece of cardstock in here and I want to stamp off the cardstock, terrible color to use. If I want to stamp off the cardstock, my stamp has to go off of the cardstock, but it's going to go up here on the rim of the misty, and that's not going to work. When you use the misty corner, it creates a corner for your misty, and then you can use that stamp off of the piece of cardstock, and it allows you, you know, to get in both corners that way. And if you have to stamp it a second time because it's secured in the corner, you're not going to get a double shadow kind of deal. I hope that makes sense, but we're not going to use this right now. Okay, so I am going to put a little bit of the embossing magic pad here. Yeah, you have to be on my YouTube channel, not just on YouTube. There isn't a community tab on YouTube. You have to go right to my channel. The best way to find my channel is if you're watching on YouTube, down underneath the video is my face, and it'll say... Gina K Design Stamp TV, click on that and it'll take you right to my direct channel. And that's where you can subscribe and that's where you can see the community tab. All right. So I'm going to use this stamp and I'm going to put it right here. Let's see. How do I want to do this? What's a good way to do this? I think I'll do it this way. No, I think I'll do it this way. It's gonna have a little gap in the center there, but maybe we can fill that in with something. Okay, so I'm gonna put it right here. And I'm gonna ink it up with some Versamark. I know a lot of people weren't sure about buying the holiday tapestry because they were like, oh, I don't know if that's holiday enough. And then when they started to see all the things you could do with it, it became a pretty hot stamp set. People really enjoyed it. It's such a beautiful flourish, and it's true. I mean, if you put a Christmas greeting with it, it definitely has a holiday festive feel, but it can be used any time of the year, which in my opinion makes it a more versatile set and maybe more of a good purchase. Okay, so I'm going to put that on there, and then I'm going to use my Chucky tool to really press down the ink. Okay. And then I am, we're going to hold on to this. Don't let this go. Here we go. Let me make sure that stays. <gasps> okay. Let's check that where that was. That should be okay. Probably didn't need quite as much pressure, but you know, Okay, so I'm gonna use the white powder for this and I'm gonna emboss one side at a time here. I'm gonna press that tape down again, but that masking magic down again, but I just wanna make sure I get the embossing powder on there without smearing everything first. Now I can see where that is. I don't think you guys can see it there. You can see it when I hold it like that. So you can see where all the powder is you can see there's like a little missing element there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to emboss this first. So let's do this first. I'm gonna hold it up away from the misty. So don't panic. But I'm gonna warp my misty. I won't, it's still pretty far away. Okay. And you can see, this is just a little embossing tip if you're new to embossing. You don't need to go like this, like you're drying your hair. You actually just want to hold it right on the design until you see it turn nice and shiny. Otherwise, it's going to take you a lot longer to emboss it because when you do this, you don't get the heat directly on the images, and you need that. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stamp an image in there. I'm going to stamp one image right here just to fill this in. I'll use a block. So I'm going to use the Versamark. Wish me luck. I'm going in right in here. What's nice about these images that come in the set is they do coordinate with the stamp, the big stamp, so it'll look really nice. And it'll just give us a little image right in there so that when we're ink blending, we don't have a big empty space. Now, if you don't even have a, a stamp like this, you can still make these cards. You can just take little stamps like we did the other day with the wreath builder stamps and we made the butt card, remember that? Um, <laughs> well, you can use the same kind of stamps and cover your whole sheet with those kinds of stamps. So let's use the opposite side here. Well, we'll do the same thing, I think. I think we'll go right here like that. Okay. Okay. And now we'll add some ink to the Misty. Oh, you like this time slot, Diana? Good. I'm so glad. I know, you know, um, nighttime is fun too. Sometimes I like nighttime because it's like the end of the day and everybody's like done, but I guess it depends on where you are. I guess that's presumptuous to say it's the end of the day. It's not the end of the day everywhere in the world. But for me, it's the end of the day and I have nowhere to be afterwards. So I like nighttime too, but daytime really is nice because everybody's a little more awake. <laughs> None of you have to leave to go to bed early. That's fun. <laughs> Okay, and plus we get to have lots of our European friends with us because I know that it gets to be late in parts of Europe. Stamp issues for uh, customer service, right? Yes, if you are, yeah, if you're looking for in stock issues, I really don't have that information, but our customer service team is usually pretty good. They can give you an idea of when some things are going to come back in stock. Now, they don't know all of it. That's for sure, because we don't know, because our manufacturers are so behind, but they can help a little bit anyway and let you know when things are awake. Things are awake. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm not awake when things are on order. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do <laughs> Oh man, what am I even talking about? Am I even here? Okay. So I'm going to finish up this, and then I see one more little hole I want to fill with a tiny stamp. I hope I have a tiny enough stamp. I'll find one. Now, if you don't have a tiny enough stamp, I will give you a little trick. But I think I have one here. But now you probably want the trick, huh? Okay, we'll do the trick. So I'm going to use this little stamp, which is... I'll show you what it looks like. It's this little leaf right here, but I don't want it to, you know, get in the way of these other images. Oh, I don't even have to do the trick because it's not gonna get in the way of the other images. But if it was going to get in the way of the other images, or if it was going to like infringe over here, you just put that post-it note back there and, you know, do the same post-it note trick that we did earlier. Okay. So here we go. I'm going in right here to add that. And a little embossing powder. And then we'll be ready to do some ink blending. Okay. Here we go. That was a bit Thursday at noon. What's that? Thursdays at noon for this day. For Is this live? For this live? Yeah. What are you asking? That's going to be the. Somebody asked if that's... Do we always do it? Yeah, yeah we've, we've been doing um, Thursdays at noon and Monday nights at 7 p.m. And that's all Chicago time, Central time. And I think we're going to stick with this. 
especially this weekend, Tom and I are going to be moving everything out of here and into the new studio. So with that, um, I, I do have to let you guys know we are not going to be on on Monday. Monday is the holiday here in the U.S. It's Memorial Day. And so we are going to take that day off, but we're not actually going to take it off. We're going to be testing out the equipment at the new place and setting things up over there. So we won't have a live on Monday. So I guess the next time I'll see you guys is back here again on Thursday. And I have not done the um, knockoff video yet. Um, I, I mean, I'm meaning to do it. I've just been really busy and I am talking to some of my other company owner friends because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Plus, I'm, uh, I really want to get my thoughts together and I've been really busy getting ready for our end of the summer release, which I know is light years away right now, but it isn't for us. So um, trying to get stamps and dies sent in. So I'll be getting to that really soon, I promise. And I won't let you miss it because I will make a big deal about that I'm going to do it. Okay, so we're going to use a three color blend. We're going to use Jelly Bean Green, Turquoise Sea, and Wild Lilac. So I'm going to start up here with Jelly Bean. And I'm going to bring Jelly Bean in just halfway down. No, Tom's not a vet. You're not he a vet, not Tom. He does not have that honor. But his father was and my father was. Okay. So I'm going to start working this down here. Oh, that's so pretty. I love this design. I got to admit, I love this design. Victoria Day, you just celebrated that in Canada. Is that the same as our um, Memorial Day, Victoria Day? It sounds like it is. Okay, so I'm not using the post-it notes this time. I'm going to use the next color. Let me get my little stands here. It makes it a lot easier to pick up the color on these. So now I'm gonna work my way down to halfway into this triangle. So I'm going to start off to the side here. I'm going to blend this up. And then I'm going to get the green one and I'm going to blend it back down again. And you see how I've created a whole new color in there? Just by blending what was left of that aqua, that turquoise sea. And now this one, I'm going to go halfway down with the turquoise sea. So real vibrant turquoise sea. I'm going to need a fourth color. I didn't think about that. So I'm going to go with, I, I'm, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'm excited. Okay. So now let's go to the next color, which is going to be wild lilac. So I've got wild lilac here. And I'm going to work those two colors together. You liked our crazy hat day? We had crazy hat day yesterday at work. And I posted a picture both on Facebook and on the community tab here on YouTube. Um, it was so much fun seeing everybody's hats. <laughs> and Tom did not have a cowboy hat on. I just want you guys to know what happened to that, Tom. Uh oh. <laughs> Work in progress. Oh, you're working on it? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I did the same thing again. I did the wild lilac and then there was a little wild lilac resting on top of that ink. So I took my turquoise sea brush and I just pushed that wild lilac and turquoise sea together and it created a darker, more wisteria color in between and that creates that nice blend. So a little bit more wild lilac down here and then we're gonna go to pink. Now, I could do a softer pink like bubblegum or I could do a real bright pink like what like passionate pink. I think I'm going to go with the softer one. I may regret it, but I think I want to go with the softer pink. I'm going to use bubblegum. I only say I may regret it because it is a pretty vibrant colored card, but I think this will work. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, I think this will work. I think passionate pink would almost be a little too much. Okay, I'm, I know I'm down kind of low here. Let's move this up. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to just take that wild lilac and kind of go over it, just over the seam a little bit. 
to make more of like a mauve. Here we go. I haven't heard the word mauve in a while. Do you remember when everything was mauve and country blue? Everybody's house was decorated in mauve and country blue. Yes, I'm dating myself, but I do remember those days. 80s? That was the 80s. Yeah, the 80s. Mauve and country blue. Who had mauve and country blue in their house? Did you guys? I did. <laughs> we had our whole house. Tom and I had our whole house decorated in mauve. I'm sure you love that era, Tom. <laughs> Are you glad that we're done with mauve for a while? <laughs> Okay. You say mauve? Mauve? Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm from the East Coast. I don't know if that means anything when it comes to mauve and how to say it. All right. So now I'm going to pull these off. Oh, ceramic geese. Yep. And that is just a fun look with that masking magic. It just breaks it up in a cool way. Love it. Okay. I feel like we're reminiscing. We're going down memory lane with the uh, the mauve decor and the geese. Everybody had geese. And then for a while, apples were everywhere. I had the whole apple dish set. My apples. Remember? I had apples everywhere, Tom. <laughs> Tom didn't want to eat an apple for 10 years after that phase. Didn't break enough of those. <laughs> if you didn't hear what Tom said, he said, couldn't break enough of those, my apple dishes. <laughs> Plates. Okay. So I didn't cut that black piece very well. It's a little bit bigger at the bottom, but it's not big enough for me to think that I have, well, maybe I'll take a shot. Why not? What do I have to lose except a whole card? I'm just going to try to cut a hair off. Okay, that is seriously just a hair. That's not enough. All right, here we go. Ooh. Here we go. Yes. See, when I said a hair, I meant a hair. It could be one of my hairs falling out. All right, so now I'm going to put this on a card base like that. So big difference between these two, right? This is a more soft look. This is a bolder look. This used more individual stamps, not quite as many as you could have used. You could have done flowers, single flowers and leaves. And then this was just one big background stamp stamped all at once. Okay. <laughs> I love um, I love hearing all of the, uh, let's see, what would I suggest for substituting with distress oxide, similar colors? Oh my goodness. I don't know all the oxide colors off the top of my head, but what you could do is like if you, if you shop in a, on an online store, like a Simon Says Stamp place like that, they sell both. You could always look at them side by side on the website and see which ones would look closest to you. Now, if you wanted to, you could also do a card this way. And if you're gonna do that with the masking magic, then I suggest that you cut the strips to be long this way, instead of doing them the short way. Because you're, you know, you would want them to go all the way across and they wouldn't fit the other way. Okay. So now it's time to add some greetings to these. So I'm going to cut, I do have a love greeting for those of you that watched Rena with me last week. She cut this out and um, didn't use it. And it was in the trash. and <laughs> I picked it out of the trash this morning. I'm going to use it again. Um, and I'm going to use the forever and shadow die. Well, I'm not going to use the shadow part, but I'm going to use the forever die because I know a lot of you got those layering bundles and you're looking for more ideas to use those dies. So I'll use those today. The Love and Shadow and the Forever and Shadow. And that those came from a little love and a little hello layering bundles. So let's get the hello die. When I ever I do the big intricate dies, I do them off one side or the other on my die cutting machine and I do them blade side up. I always get a much better cut that way. So if you ever have trouble with an intricate die, just try that. Move it over to the side a little bit. And then um, <laughs> I 
that your mother switched from geese to hens? <laughs> What's the difference? Are they, uh, see, I don't know my birds. Are they, do they look a lot different? Geese and hens? They probably do. I'm so not a farm girl. I was born and raised just outside of Philadelphia. So I'm a little bit more of a city girl. So I moved up to Wisconsin and we live in Milwaukee. So we live in a fairly big city here. But when I first moved here, we lived all the way up near Wisconsin Dells, just farm country. And that was quite a shock to my system. I felt like I was on Green Acres <laughs> and I was the lady, what's her name? <laughs> you know, I'm talking about, <laughs> say goodbye city life. <laughs> was it Eva Gabor or Zsa Zsa that played her? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so there's my hello, and I'm going to do a little um, a little strip sentiment using the coordinating stamp set for this, and then we'll get this back again. Hands are short necked. I didn't what, know that. What nail polish are you wearing? What nail polish am I wearing? I am wearing. It's a Sally Hansen nail polish. Oh, let me show you. I have it right here. It's this. No, it's not. It's Essie, not Sally Hansen. It's Essie, and it's called, oh my gosh, I can't see. What does this say, Tom? It says <laughs> Fairy Taylor. Fairy Taylor is the color. It's this right here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use... I've ever said that. Fairy Taylor, there you go. <laughs> it's the first time for everything. <laughs> Okay, so for the love, I already had this strip sentiment in my little box of tricks. Love you with all my heart. So I'll use that for one of them. And then for this one, I've got the a little hello stamp set here. So we can say hello. I hope you're doing well. I really miss you. How have you been? How about I think of you often? I haven't used that one yet, so I want to use that. I think of you often. Now, when I do these strip sentiments, I have found that it works better instead of using embossing ink to actually use white pigment ink. The greetings are so small. And so if you miss any little part, you know, you can almost lose a whole letter. But when you stamp them with white pigment ink, the white pigment ink seems to fill in any areas that you miss. So, and it sticks really well to the to the stamp the very first time you use the stamp. So let's stamp that. I think of you often. There we go. And then, oh, let's get the white embossing powder. Get it on there. Here we go. Now I always have a little brush close by, just to brush off any little strays that I don't want to emboss. And you either brush them off beforehand or you scrape them off afterwards. And the scraping is a lot more work. So I take the time to brush them off. But if you missed one, you can always use a mono sand eraser to get rid of any strays that already heated up and embossed. So sometimes you might see in my video that I missed a couple and then you see in my photograph that they're gone. Well, I'll, after the video, I just look at everything really closely and I can go back and I can just scratch off anything <laughs> that wasn't right. Okay, so here we go. Yes, hoagies are Philly sandwiches. Hoagies are um, the equivalent of a sub sandwich everywhere else. Oh, I miss hoagies. I mean, I know I can get sub sandwiches, but there's something about like a Philly cheesesteak or a Philly hoagie. Oh, that none of this works with my diet. Maybe it's better I'm not there. Because <laughs> when I go back and visit, it's going to be really hard for me not to eat pizza because it's the best pizza in the world. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I have not had pizza in Italy. I am sure that that is better. But um, it's the best that I've ever had in the country is Philly pizza and New York pizza. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so now I'm going to use one of the dies from Master Layouts 3. 
So this has all the little flag dies in here. I keep mine in these stencil pockets and the stencil pockets have been reordered, although I think we still have some in stock. Um, and then I'll just find one that fits. That one fits pretty well. Now you can be brave and not tape it down. Let's move up a little bit. You can be brave, not tape it down. Or you can be smart and tape it down. I'm going to go for brave today instead of smart. No, I already moved it. All right, I'm going for smart. So <laughs> went for brave and that didn't work out. <laughs> brave is overrated. <laughs> That's about two seconds. Oh, so overrated. All right, there we go. I'm sticking it down with some washi. There we go, now I don't have to be brave. Ugh. Oh, Chicago has great pizza too, Marcy. You're right, Chicago pizza is great, but it's a different style. So, you know, both are good. All right, there we go, I think of you often. All right, let's assemble these cards. You like cauliflower crust pizza? You know, I had one cauliflower crust pizza, but it was from a box, you know, where you buy it at the grocery store frozen and you put it in the oven. And I wasn't a big fan, but now I know that some of the pizza places do this and they have those good pizza ovens and I bet it's amazing when you get it there. You'll have to tell me what brand you used if you did it at home, because maybe I just got a bad brand. Which, um, the master layout set that has the postage stamp is the same one that I used for the butt card. That is Master Layouts 4. That's the big set. It's got a lot of dies in there. Okay, so I've got my cards here. Time to assemble them. Do it quick and easy. Let's do that. Okay. So I think I'll go with, um, I think I'm going to do the love one on the one that has red for some reason that makes me feel like I should have the love one over here because red is the color of love. So is pink though. Love you with all my heart. And then hello, I'm going to put that right on that middle one and then have this underneath. I think of you often. Karen's a big fan of chicken breast crust. Chicken breast Chili, crust? Uh, wow, I never had that. I didn't even know that was a thing. Long. See how much we all learn on these lives that has nothing to do with paper crafting? I love that. Aw, okay. So I'm gonna take some of the Gina K Designs Connect glue and I'm just going to, I almost am out of connect. This is scary. I'm gonna just, uh-oh. No! Okay, there we go. I'm getting really low. I do not like to be low on connect glue, paper towels, or toilet paper. It's just my thing. I'm gonna take my finger and dip into this. Now, if you remember, Rena put, had put some tape on the back of this, so it is kind of sticky already. And yes, I did salvage this from the trash. Uh, me trash picking in my craft room. It was quite a sight. Okay, there we go. I don't want to break it. It's so delicate. So we'll put this down here. I don't know where I want it yet. What's nice about these is because they're so delicate, you can kind of maneuver them and make them a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger if you want. There we go. That's kind of a nice spot. And we'll just put that right underneath. We can even offset it a little bit like that. I don't want to hide too much of the turquoise, so I'll tape those on after my fingers aren't so sticky. Let's get a little more glue here. We need guitar music, Tom. Everybody loves the guitar. You got a lot of compliments. I was reading comments the other night and um, people liked your guitar playing, so you'll have to do that again, okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
It's always good when I'm doing something like this to have never, that nice background music. You never know what you're not going to get. <laughs> is that our catchphrase you never know what you're not going to get <laughs> great <laughs> oh we can disappoint you 10 different ways <laughs> okay yes yeah, so if you're wondering what the butt card is watch my monday video head over to my channel it's the video right before this and you'll get to see the butt card Okay, let me move that out of the way. I'm going to bring this back because that has glue all over it now. And then I will tape these greetings down. Love you with all my heart. And I'm not going to pop these up. I'm just going to put them right on the card. I'm going to move this one over a little bit. I don't know if that's eye appealing or not, but I'm going with it because it's already stuck down. <laughs> and this one... I think of you often. Put this one down here. Actually, we could, uh, no, I'll put it down here. Once you make the commitment, you know, you kind of get stuck. Okay, so those are my two cards for today. Just something a little bit different. No flowers to color, nothing like that. I know they are still a little bit flowery, but here we go. Get the gluey stuff off there. But something a little bit different, a fun way to use that masking magic. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Like I said earlier, if you're on YouTube and you want to give this video a thumbs up, I would sure appreciate it. And also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. Later, I'll be posting high quality pictures on both Facebook and on my community tab here on YouTube. And for my Twitch friends, there's nowhere for me to post a photo, but come join our Facebook community. It's Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. Now, we will not be back on Monday night. It's Memorial Day here in the States. And and we are moving this whole craft room into our studio over in our new location. So we'll be busy setting up and testing equipment and getting ready for next Thursday. So I will be back next Thursday for a lunchtime live. I hope you guys will be back then too. too. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all so very much. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.